it's late. We're tired. But this was our reward. And this could be your reward. Oh my god, the fat in here? <laughs> ridiculous. Honestly, ridiculous. The whole thing. All right, let's just recap what we've learned today. A, a brisket can be an absolute pain in the ass. Expect more time than less. Expect about an hour per pound in cooking time. Pre-trim weight. This was 10.3 uh, pounds, and it took us 10.3, uh, 11 hours to cook. So, but, and if it's the first time you're gonna do this, you're probably gonna mess up. So, start way earlier than you need to, knowing that a cooler can be your best friend for holding and maintaining the temperature and the integrity of your brisket for as long as you need it to, which is easy four or five hours. Okay, so one more thing. Look, th this is the, oh my God, the fat here is just like insane. This is the flat part. This is the thinner part. This is the part that would dry out quicker. But when you can do this and see the juice running out of the flat part by itself, that's very special. This part here, the point, you assume is going to be juicy. You don't always get that with the flat, but with the point, watch how little pressure this needs. It's like, it's a rainy day in uh, Palm Springs. I don't even know what that means. That's but oh wild. my God. I'm gonna cut a few pieces. We're gonna have a few bites. We're gonna say goodbye. All right, so oh. the looks aren't everything. I mean, look at me, jokes. Okay, but this, that, what just happened there? Let me try and do this. The Hold jiggle. on. The jiggle. The jiggle. Oh, mother pepper. I gotta get this off. In one, two, three. Ow. Hot. But it's quite pretty, isn't it? Fucking beautiful, man. Wow. So let's just see if it... So there's more jiggle here than I've ever experienced. So I think that's a good thing. So now here's the problem that we have, ladies and gentlemen. This is the flat, and this is the point. And the direction of the grain runs sort of this way and then this way. So we need to make a decision on how we cut this. And a serrated knife is really the great way to go. And while I don't have a cooking guy serrated knife in my hand quite yet, there's a chance there could be one. We gotta figure this kit out. So somewhere around here, we'll be good at separating point from flat. So let's just go about here. Oh, so that was a very, very happy feeling cut. And let's look. <laughs> so a little smoke ring around here, not a ton, but enough that I'm okay with it. Now just remember a pellet smoker does not deliver the same amount of smoke as a stick smoker when you put like actual pieces of wood in. Oh my God, the juice But right look now? at what's happening here. Okay, can you Holy just crap. super close up on that or something? Oh yeah. But let me show you what a good sign is. Oh my God. Whoa. Holy S. We're all eating big tomorrow, boys. That's crazy. All right, so now I gotta cut this kid. Hold on. We're gonna get a couple pieces out of the flat first. All right, so let's just take a piece right from here. Oh, do you see? It's just pouring out. One more, one perfect one here. And then I'm gonna show you something that we'll see if it can do this. So here's, a, here's an important test. Does it flop like that? That, I don't know the technical term, but that's the flop test. 
And you want it to flop? You, you want it to, to relax down on the sides. And you also want this to happen. Now I've already started to F it up. You don't want it to fall and break apart under its own weight, but you want to do this and then have that happen. That means there's enough texture uh, to it without it being too, too soft, which is a sin in the barbecue world. I need a bite before I get anywhere else in this. All right, here's the plan. All three of us are having bites at the same time. It's like, it's like we're like cheersing. Max just freaked the day out, a, a nighttime moth. Hold on, let me put these on here. I gave you each a paper towel. Chancy, take one. Thank you. There you go, big boy. Okay, oh. hold oh on. My God. Hold on, I got mine. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh my God. Wow. Melt in your fucking mouth. Holy shit. Oh my God, that is ridiculous. So worth the 12 hours. Oh my God. Wait, the barbecue sauce. Remember the barbecue sauce? Oh yeah. I made it. It's cool now. Honestly, the flavor of this is so magnificent. You don't really need that. But uh, who's, uh, who's to say that a little of this isn't going to be damn good. And I know that the little chunky bits that I like in this are not that common, but the tartness of the apple cider vinegar in that absolutely marries perfectly with the fatty richness of the brisket. You cut this thing down to like a quarter of an inch of fat on the top. You don't need more than that. Trust me, this is mental. Let's just take a quick look at the point. Oh, hi. Uh, so before I open this guy up, just let me say one thing. I'm a cook. I'm not a barbecue guy. This is out of my general wheelhouse. My wheelhouse is like burritos and burgers and sandwiches and steaks and stuff like that. This is a whole nother thing. I've had huge amounts of anxiety the entire day and this is the moment right now. This is like I'm about to get my, my, my SAT results back and my SAT results were not great. So I'm hoping to turn things around right now, but I just don't know. Nothing I can do. Max just said to me, I'll tell you one thing. I thought he was going to get emotional with me and he went, let me tell you one thing. It's done. You can't change it. It is what it is. You hope for a little bit more than that from your children, but all right, fuck it. Let's go. I got to own this moment and I will. Boys, what is our ideal resting period for a brisket? Two hours. Two hours. How long has it been since we put it in here? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Why? Because we want it so bad. We're hungry. We can't wait. We're dying for Look, it's been since uh, 11 this morning that we've been here. It's now quarter to 12. I think we deserve a bite. And But as my father would have said if he was still here, don't do as I do, do as I say. I'm saying to you, let it rest two hours. What I'm about to do is bust it open after like 15 minutes. Shall we? Let's do it. Here we go. There it is. That's very anticlimactic, isn't it? A bunch of towels. You expect to see something good. You know, well, but the towels smell amazing. And then we take that off, and there is our prize. So now I gotta get this off. And set it down on here. Let me tell you why this is an important step. If we unwrap the brisket right now and cut it, It'll be tremendous. It might even be amazing. I don't know. My fingers are crossed. But one thing for sure is going to happen. All the juice and the moisture that's there is going to run the hell out. And any brisket you save for tomorrow is going to be dry. And you don't want that. You don't want to 
be forced to use like a sauce or a gravy or a, a, a whatever to, to bring it back to life. A barbecue sauce? A barbecue sauce. We'll be dipping in. We won't be serving it with, on, on top of. You know what I mean. Don't do this to me. It's late. Okay? So what we're going to use to rest this in so it doesn't go cold too fast is, ready? A cooler, ladies and gentlemen. A regular, everyday beach cooler. And this is the thing that people don't know. A cooler keeps things cold. We all get that. But because it's a insulated box, it also keeps things hot. So two things are gonna happen here. It's a perfect place for us to rest this in, but because brisket cooking can be all over the board, it could be 12 hours today, it could be 15 hours tomorrow. You just don't know, it depends on the brisket and the temperature, what's going on and how you've prepped it, the whole thing. Let's say you have people coming over at five o'clock and your brisket is ready at 1 p.m. Nobody freak out. We put it in the cooler, like I'm gonna show you, and at five o'clock it'll still be perfect. Coolers keep things cold and hot. It's just an insulated thermal box. We all get that? Hell yeah. yeah. All right, so here's how we do this. We open the lid. I'm gonna put down a couple towels. A couple beach towels will work or, what are these? Hand towels. Kitchen towels. Kitchen towels. Hand towels. I hope this, is, I hope this cooler's big enough actually. So I put a double layer of these down. And then because this is greasy and I don't want to kill my hand towels, I'm going to put down a double piece of our butcher paper that it's wrapped in. We grab up our brisket and we go like that. One more piece of the paper on top. A couple more towels. And we're done. Let me tell you, your resting time should be two hours. It's going to be fine. Please don't think it's going to be cold. Sam, it's going to be cold. I just explained it keeps things hot. Two hours. Give it a chance to do what it wants to do. Relax. All the juices are out on the outsides. They come back in. Everybody's happy in here. If you got an hour, you go an hour. Let's just say you've been drinking. There's been extracurricular activities. You cannot wait. They want to eat now, Max. What do you say to that? It'll be warm, chill. I'm saying, what if they're like really like effed up after a fun night and they want to eat now and they don't want to wait? Ah, go can't. ahead. No, they can't. Max says you can't. I'm telling you, you can't. Don't expect great brisket tomorrow, but if you're really having fun, you'll probably eat the whole thing anyways. You're gonna see us again in an hour and a half, all right? And there you have it, our internal end goal temperature of 201. Oh, it just went to 202. Or well, it's back to 201. That's where we want it. Now it's time to take it off. I want to welcome everybody to nighttime at the house. Oh, welcome to nighttime at the house. What it's, time is it? It's dark. It's uh, 11.05. Uh, this guy went on at uh, 12. Uh, 12. So you do that math. It's been 11 hours. Look, brisket takes a while. Absolutely takes a while. Fingers are crossed in my welding gloves that it will be delicious. It smells delicious. Let's check, shall we? Et voila. Ah, uh, look, we're cooking a bag. But here we go. Yank that out. Let's just kill the smoker and we'll take our friend off. So, I'll tell you something. You see this? I don't know if you can get what's going on. There's this flexibility thing that is what you want. Let's take it over. Let me show you step five. Potentially the most important step. All right, time to make barbecue sauce for what we hope is an amazing brisket. Not to go on it, to dip it into after. We start with a little oil in our pot and some onions. Finely diced. And yes, it may not be traditional and yes, people in Central Texas may shit all over me for this, but cooking is about what you like, not what people say is right. We don't really want these to have color, but we do want them to definitely soften. So give them a couple minutes. 
And when they're nicely softened, in go the rest of the ingredients. First is a cup of ketchup, which is often the base for barbecue sauce. But instead of all ketchup, I'm going to use chili sauce. This Americanized version that I used in the uh, chopped cheese. And it was delicious. And now we'll throw in some black pepper because it's perfect in this. Apple cider vinegar because all barbecue sauces should have some tang. I like a little grainy mustard, about a tablespoon. I like some dark brown sugar for the sweetness and for the stickiness, some honey. Nice. Two more things. One is a pinch of salt. And the last ingredient, I'm cheating by using an already existing barbecue seasoning that has flavors like cumin and coriander and a little more brown sugar and some allspice in it. And we mix. And now we're just gonna let this come to a boil and turn it down to a simmer and let it go for 10 or 15 minutes to help the flavors come together, marry nicely, and just generally get way frickin' better. i am uh, decided I need to put the pro back in. Because, because I'm flying blind here and you would not shut your eyes and fly a plane. I need some idea of when this is getting close. And look, the ultimate test will be taking this guy, sticking it in and giving it a wiggle. And if it goes in easy, then, then good. But I still want to know what the temperature is. Because you two guys are going to f off again. And I'm going to have to call you and go, oh, it's getting close. Come back. Sorry that I'm here by myself manning the forts. That's what she said. Just stick it in and wiggle it. Shut up, <laughs> stupid. I'm going right here. Do you want to get closer, or can I just do this by myself? So we pick a side. I mean, who knows? Even this. Even that's freaking questionable. I'm sure it went into brisket, or there's a big clump of paper there. <sighs> Maybe I need to live in Texas for a few years. I didn't put the, the temperature probe in. Screw it. Because here's the thing, that will just give us a, a guide. At some point, it's less about temperature but more about the tenderness of it. So I'm gonna start checking with my, with this, uh, what's it called? Thermometer. Thermometer. I'll start checking with this in a two and a half-ish, three hours. I'll just get a little idea of what's going on in there. We want this to go in when it's like butter. That's what we're looking for. It's at temperature now. I could eat this and not get sick. But I'm telling you, it's less about the temperature and more about the, 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 the pliability you want. It's soft and jiggly. And honestly, briskets for me have been a crapshoot. So we'll find out. What's, it's looking good. We're tracking in the right direction. The question is, is can, will it come off the way that we want? And if it comes out to be a complete piece of shit and a horrible chunk of meat, this episode will never see the light of day. And we're still fat side up, that's important. Leave it like that, we close our lid, and we pray. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get our butcher paper out first. Oh, that was loud. And a big piece of it. And here's how this happens. My kid goes on. Ah, oh, nice. Now it goes like this. Like this. Come on in, fellas. And like this. There we are, a nice little package that now goes right back on the smoker. Okay, so now that he's stopped for a second, we can take a look. So a couple things you need to see. One, it's not nearly as dark. Yes, it's not finished, but non-pellet smokers. Stick wood, where you put actual pieces of wood in, deliver more smoke, and that means more color on the outside of it. I mean, that's okay. I'm going for flavor. I'm not a competition brisket barbecue guy. But if you look here, this is a mortal sin to anybody in the business. That, just pooling juices, while they look beautiful, the problem is, is that this bark, 
the outside, the exterior of a brisket is prized for its deep, dark, bark-like texture. And when the juices pool, it takes away all the seasoning. You can see it's like a little bald spot. And that's okay, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. Remember what I said, I'm going for flavor. So let's get this guy off. It's pretty hot, but I can do it. Oh, that was hot. Now, step three, the wrap. Here we got gardeners. Uh, there you can hear them and a guy cutting uh, palm trees right here. We're gonna be okay. This has now been on um, four hours and 45 minutes. Should we have a little look at it? Come on, come on. It's a thousand times better in here. A thousand times. All right, so here's what I was saying. Smokers at 250. We want the final internal temperature of the brisket to be, we'll make it easy, we'll just call it 200. So here's what's gonna happen. The temperature is gonna rise, it's gonna rise, it's gonna rise. We'll say this is where we are now, I don't know, that thing came out of the fridge, we'll call it 50 degrees, here's 200 degrees. Somewhere around the 150 to 165 mark, there's something that happens while it's cooking that stalls the temperature. You're watching the numbers just go up and up and up and then it just, gets to that, say, 160 point and doesn't move. There's two ways you can deal with that. Of course it's gonna get hotter, but things are happening inside that brisket that I'm not smart enough to understand that prevent it from going past that for a bit. So, you can either just power through, knowing it will eventually get up to the 200 mark, or you can do what I'm gonna do, wrap it in butcher paper and put it back on. So the butcher paper is gonna help it cook a little bit faster, help maintain crust that's on the inside of it, and help keep it super moist and tender. We're all getting to the same spot at the same time, you understand. But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use this to help get us there, which is a little bit better, a little bit more moist, a little juicier of a brisket in the end. It's nice being inside, isn't it? Jesus, can we go in? I'm fucking dying. I can, the sun please. Is directly on my back. Okay, right well, now. I, let's go in and talk. There's a whole house with what's it called? Air conditioning. Air conditioning. The smoker set to 250 degrees. We're looking for an internal temperature when the brisket is finished of between 200 and 205 degrees. The brisket professionals will say 203 is perfect. Hell, if I can get it to 203 and it's perfect, I'll be a very happy, Jesus. And we're on. Lovely. I'm gonna put the probe in so we can keep an eye on our temperature. There. We'll close it up. All right, so now we're gonna sprinkle. And we're gonna go evenly. We're not gonna go crazy but we do want a nice coating of this all the way around. You just use your hand to keep it from going off the edge. We are gonna do the edges, of course. You know, like here, for sure. All these sides definitely get. If that fly gets any closer. There's a fly on my camera. Jesus, flip them over. Salt, pepper, garlic. Really, in my world, this is all you need. Again, I'm not from Texas. I'm not a barbecue guy, but I do feel confident that a simple little seasoning like this is pretty much all we need. Okay, there it is. A little pat, a little love, and we're ready for the smoker. All right, so our guy's good. And right now, we're gonna make a seasoning for them. It's very important. The Central Texas guys use only two things, a kosher salt and pepper. That's it. I like a brisket to taste like brisket. We'll make a, a barbecue sauce for it for dipping in after, but I kind of like it not to be too fancied up. So we're only going to add one extra thing. So in my shaker, I'm going to put equal parts of kosher salt, black pepper, and garlic powder. So again, somebody's out there going, dude, you've already made a mistake. You can't possibly be using garlic powder. Well, guess what? I am. And then we'll shake this up, and then we will season liberally. Before we do anything else, let's check out 
how much this guy weighs. It was 10.32 pounds before. It now weighs, I don't know if I can do this. It now weighs 7.9 pounds. We took almost three pounds off, so just know that. Be prepared for it. Don't be saddened by it. Now we season. And there we have it. A 10.32 pound USDA prime brisket. And our first step is trimming. So let's get this kid out of the bag. What you don't want to do is cut into this at all because, well, I'll explain that in a minute. But here's our guy. That's kind of beautiful, isn't it? I know there's plenty of people that could not get their head around this, but. So here's what we need. We need to address the fat. Fat is good. Fat is clearly our friend, but we don't want too much. We ought to clean this guy way up. And if we flip the guy over this way, you can see what's here. This is called the heel. This we don't want, so. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to make holes where fat used to be because that's just going to be a spot that the seasoning can get trapped and it won't cook properly. So my first step is usually getting rid of this guy. So with my knife fairly flat to the brisket, I'm going to come along like this. Let's just take off these extra little bits that we don't need. This is basically silver skin and that fat is not going to render down and not do good things for anybody. So this is kind of the easy side. We've taken this guy down quite a lot. We're getting rid of the little bits along here. I'm okay with many of them, but not all of them. And now we have to start dealing with this. And one of the things I like to do is I like to make a fairly important cut along here because once you do, you're going to start to see how much fat is there and you're going to be able to give yourself a level on what you're going to keep. Look at this. This is crazy, right? Corners are not helping anything because they'll just start to burn. So this up here is the decal. When you look at a brisket, there's two parts of it. This is called the flat because it's flat. And then you come up here to this mountain and this up here is called the decal and this is the point. And there's this layer of fat that's going to run underneath this pointed part here that's going to add tons and tons and tons of flavor. The flat is always uh, less juicy than the point is. I'll admit, I cut too close there. I didn't want to do that, but, but now that I have, I have no choice but to live with it and admit it. Amateur. Total amateur hour. And down here. Barbecue YouTubers all over the world are scouting out their eyes. Oh, is there a smoker ready? Smoker's up to tap. 250. There it is. Okay, I'm starting to feel pretty good about this. Look, I don't trim like the competition guys do. In fact, I don't trim like a lot of people do, and I'm sure there's somebody out there yelling at me right now for doing something, for doing something wrong. And hey, I can hack it. Look, I've cooked great briskets and I've cooked okay ones, and I never know quite what the difference has been. I'm just trying to do all the right things today to get us some very delicious brisket to eat. This thing was walking on my hand. It's nice. It's gonna take all frickin' day. All day. You know, it's not a, a simple proposition. Let me rephrase that. It's not a quick proposition. Cooking a brisket is not complicated. I've done it a bunch of times. And sometimes they're outstanding. And sometimes they're meh. And honestly, I do not know what causes an outstanding one versus a meh one. We're gonna follow the rules today. There's five steps. Trim, season, smoke, wrap, and continue to smoke, and then rest. And each one is very important, especially that resting one. And when Max and Chansey are tired because it's now 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night. They want to go home and I say, we have to let it rest another hour. And they go, no, yeah, come on, let's just do it and end this so we can go. I'm going to stick to my guns. Nobody's going anywhere. They want a brisket, they're getting a brisket. It's only one way to do it with some time. And we're doing that. We start by trimming it though, because it's the first thing on the list of five. 
Why don't you make a brisket? Yeah, you should make a brisket. We want you to make a brisket. How come you haven't made a brisket? Aren't you gonna make a brisket? You gotta smoke or make a brisket. Fine, I'm making a brisket. Bitches.